Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the afternoon session of the October Success Camp. We hope that you had a good morning and that we hope that you uh, learned lots and lots and uh, whet your appetite for some more games design sessions throughout the week. Um, this session is a little bit different to the others. We're going to talk about the broader applications of the skills that you use in your everyday life and at school and the skills that you used today in the sessions, the broader application of them to, um, to life in general and to, to, the, to the careers path that you might want to choose, okay? But first of all, I know I sound like a bit of a broken record, but in order for to the today's session, especially this afternoon session to work, you're going to have to go to menti.com and uh, type in the code. It's different again, 77, 22, 57, 5. Okay? 77, 22, 57, 5. So I'll give you a little bit of time to do this. Now, today's session is going to be um, a bit of a, a me asking you some questions, then giving you some information. Um, and then asking you some more questions and then giving you some more information. So it's a little bit of a back and forth between myself and you at home. So it's really important that you sign into Menti, sign up, um, and then we can both um, get the most out of this session that we possibly can, okay? So I'm gonna give you a little bit more time before I move on to the next slide, just so you can uh, sign in to menti.com 77-22-57-5. So this morning, uh, Mark, very, very kindly, uh, and it was a really interesting session. Uh, you learned about games mechanics, and it was your first steps into games development for a lot of you. Now, throughout the week, what we're going to hope to do by the sessions is we're going to build on that little bit of knowledge that you gain in each session so that by the end of the week, you'll have made something and you'll be able to test it. OK, so what he's trying to do is trying to replicate uh, the, the sort of um, the journey in which a game takes from the moment it is uh, thought of, it is imagined, it is, um, it is put down, it's designed, it's developed, and then it's tested. You're going to be doing that in one week. Okay, so but first what I want you to do is I want you to go on to menti.com and I want you to answer this question for me. All right, can you tell me what skills you used? Now go on to menti.com and you can, you can choose one of those, or if none of them, then choose none of the above. I'll give you a couple of minutes just to do that before we move on. Now, I think most of you would have answered that question by now. See, me just looking at the uh, session and observing you guys and, and what you've done and some of the questions that were asked on Menti, I'd say that you would used most of those, if not all of those skills throughout that session, okay? Um, they are all some. They are all skills that you need for games design and games developing. Um, and I think even in that first session, so session number one on day one of uh, the October Success Camp, you started to use those skills. So when designing and developing um, games, um, from the moment they're imagined to the moment that they are that they're played by people like you and myself. Um, they, you use a variety of those skills. And the skills that we just said were just a, a few examples of those. These, this, these skills are developed over time and you use many of them in subjects you now um, study at the moment, okay? And then you'll develop these um, skills through your journey to college and, uh, and to university and finally as a job, okay? So the next question I want you to ask is, 
when designing and developing a video game, you use which skills? And again, you might disagree or you might agree or you might think all of them. Just let us know what you think. I'll give you a couple of minutes just to, uh, to, to answer that question. I want you to start thinking about how these skills are quite different skills, okay? It's not like, you know, you, you study all of these in one subject at school. They might be cherry picked from different subjects. Um, so storytelling might not initially be something that you think about during computing, say. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so here, there are many times, okay, where you use, so you use skills that can be used for designing games and developing games um, without even knowing it, without even thinking that they relate to games design, all right? Now, if you've got a pen and paper to hand, I want you to just quickly write out these things. Creativity, drawing, programming, problem solving, storytelling, and right next to it, I want you to write four GCSE subjects, art, maths, English, and computing. Now, most of you haven't started your GCSEs yet. There might be a few of you that have in year nine, but I'd say the majority of you will be thinking about starting their journey to think about their um, their choices for GCSEs, all right? So what I want you to do is I want you to start thinking about how these match up. For instance, creativity. I'd say creativity you use in English, creative writing, um, things like that. I, I, uh, you, use, you use in English all the time. You also use creativity in other subjects as well. So you might want to put draw a line somewhere else to another one of those subjects. If you would, I'd start to join them up. So drawing. Again, when you're a character artist in games design, you draw all the time. You spend a lot of your time drawing storyboards, all right, creating characters. That's something that you use in, in, in art all the time. Programming, obviously, uh, Mark talked about it this morning. Programming is something that you use in the computing. A very, very, very important skill in, in games design as well. Problem solving. Now, problem solving is something that you hear in the maths curriculum a lot. And it is a maths, it is a skill that you use in maths. And now this is another one, storytelling. Storytelling, I hear you say, is an English skill, but storytelling can also be an art skill. Take a little bit of time to think about these because to be honest, a lot of them link up with each other. Storytelling, you can tell through a piece of art, okay? Creativity, you use in art all the time. Computing, you use problem solving all the time. They all are linked. We're very, very trained, especially in this country, when we're at school, to think of subjects as their own, um, own uh, sort of area, okay? They're all interlinked. And when we think about the industry that we might want to go into when we're older, these subjects are, the, the lines are blurred. There's no such thing as subjects anymore. There are just skills. And skills can be learned from a variety of different places. So, in the UK, there are just over 2,000 games companies and over 100 universities, just like us here at Middlesex, that teach games courses, okay? So, we asked you this question earlier, but I want you to answer it again, okay? We have two courses for learning to design and develop games at Middlesex University. Is that true? Is it false? Or do you not know? Answer it for me now, please. I can see that quite a lot of you have got it right, and some of you don't know, which is absolutely fine. A couple of you have no idea, but we haven't told you yet, so uh, that's fair enough. 
Okay, so in fact, at Middlesex, we have two dedicated games design courses. We have 3D animation and games, and we have a games design course, which is a three-year BSc, BA undergraduate. Okay, so you, three years you study all of the skills that you need to become a games designer. All right. We also have a third degree course in esports, so competitive esports, uh, starting soon. And we also have a visual effects course, which teaches students some of the key skills for creating content, so visual content for games and film and TV. All right. So that's just at Middlesex. There are hundreds, there's over 100 universities just like us that have courses um, like that. So how many people in the UK work in the games industry? Now, here's the, we're going to give you a couple of questions about this. A thousand, five thousand, twenty thousand or fifty thousand. What do you think? Answer for me now. Okay, some of you got it right, some of you are way lower than I thought that I expected. And how much money do you reckon it contributes to our economy? Over 50,000, over 1 million, or 1 billion, or 2 billion? Just to give you an idea of uh, how much it contributes to the economy. Um, Please guess for me. So it is the first one is over 50,000 people do work in the UK games industry. Okay. 50,000 people rely on the games industry to work for their jobs. All right. And it does contribute over two billion pounds a year to the economy which is a hell of a lot of money when you think about it. And it's something that the UK does really, really well. All right. So let's have a look um, at some of the skills and some of the jobs that you can um, go to in the industry. All right. So at university, what happens is if you're really lucky, you look to build on the passions and skills that you've learned from your time at school and from things like the, the, the October success camp. All right. So it's important to think whatever school, whatever skills that you learn, OK, whether it be in English, math, drama or PE, they are skills that you that are going to help you throughout your life. Try not to think about things solely or as um, a subject specific skill. They are things that are transferable. They are skills that you can use throughout life in various different places and various different paths. All right. So let's just have a quick look at some of the some of the uh, job titles that are available um, in the games industry. All right. And you're going to be learning a little bit about this over the week. So number one is the games designer. So the role of the games designer is to come up and develop the rules of the game. So like today, um, Mark talked about uh, games mechanics. So the games designer is someone who comes up with the games in, in mechanics, okay? It's incredibly important, this role, um, and it makes, and you need to have loads and loads of, um, of knowledge about a successful game and how the games mechanics work, okay? Um, it's basically, it's your responsibility to make sure that the game is playable. All right. So you're going to be like um, responsible for creating features, scripting missions um, and balancing of the gameplay. OK, so the, the best fit for the job. So if you are creative, logical, if you're a storyteller, if you're a problem solver and you've got lots and lots of games, uh, knowledge of games and how they work, then this is ideal for you. All right. And what you need to learn. So what you need to learn to become successful is games, mechanics, storyboarding, game logic and lots and lots about different types of games. All right. And you've made a good start on that today because we've started to learn about game mechanics and a little bit about storyboarding. And I'm sure that will come throughout the week. 
The next um, game is Games Tester. Now, this might be something that you never thought was an actual job or a career, but um, a games tester, its main job is to play the latest games that are under construction, okay? And report any, any issues or anything that is um, not working, any defects. Um, so you basically, you're a quality assurance tester. So you, before any games go out and you're able to buy them, you have to basically play them as for hours and hours and hours and work out what's wrong with them or if there are any glitches um and so yeah it's it's uh it's one of the one of the most um important jobs so best fit for the job is a perfectionist you have to be a perfectionist you have to really look in detail at some of these games okay you need to be a team player and you need to be dedicated all right and what to learn? You, you have to be good at computer science, I would say. You have to be good at playing the games. You might be good at hacking um, and quality assurance. So you need to learn all about quality assurance. The next one is you could be a games artist or animator. Now, a games artist or multimedia artist is responsible for dreaming up and designing and visualizing and ultimately creating the graphics for, for video games and other multimedia, all right? Um, this person is responsible for bringing the writer and the game designer's dreams to, to the screen, okay? So it's really, really important. It's about how it looks and how it moves, okay? Artists, dreamers, doodlers, and graphic designers are the best fit for this job. Okay, so some people might not necessarily be amazing at programming, but they might have a really, really great eye for drawing, a really great eye for the way and the feel of, of, of putting something in down on paper. So what you need to learn, you need to learn graphic design. So some people might be amazing painters and drawers or, or sketchers, but you need to try and learn to do that on a computer, okay? You need an art portfolio, which all artists need because it's um, a way of showing other people your breadth of your work. Um, and computer science and games design really do help if you are trying to burst into the, uh, the games design industry. And finally, the games developer. This is the, the, a really, really, really important role because what they do is they take the, the games designers' ideas, their drawings, the rules and game mechanics that they've put down, and they turn them into a playable game with visuals and sound. Um, and it, they basically, they're the ones who pull everything together um, and make it a playable game. So the best fit for this job is someone who is organized, someone creative, but also has a coding and programming uh, background too, okay? Um, and basically they are the video game gods. They are the ones who are, are, have an overview of the whole project. So what to learn? You need to learn, for this you need to learn code, you need to learn how to program, computer science, but you also need to be really good at working as a team and being um, organized and, um, and yeah, and you need to learn game development as a skill too. Now, just a quick question or a few quick questions um, about what we've just talked about. If you are good at storytelling, you are best suited to and pick A, B, C, or D on menti.com now. So go over to menti and pick A, B, C, or D. Okay. Once you've done that, if you are a good, if you're good at drawing and sketching, you are best suited to which A, B, C, or D. Are you best suited to being a developer, an artist or animator, a tester or a designer?
And here is the last one. If you are a perfectionist with an eye for detail, you are best suited to what? Mario's in the way of, of suited, but you are best suited to a games designer, a games artist, a games tester, or a games designer. First one was a games developer. Very quickly. Now, I'm sure most of you, I can see most of you have got this right. If you are good at storytelling, you are best designed, to be, you are best suited to being a designer, to coming up with the initial idea, okay? The, the idea of the game and all of the game mechanics that make it difficult or that make it playable or make it interesting. If you're good at drawing and sketching, you are best suited to being a games animator or games artist. That's quite an obvious one. And if you are a perfectionist with an eye for detail, you are best suited to being a games tester. Although that is a really good skill to have if you are any of those things, okay? If you are a perfectionist for, for detail, that is a skill that translates to, to everything to do with game design. Now, tomorrow in the session, in the afternoon, we have a Get Into Games careers panel. And in the, on the careers panel, we have some really, really um, important guests who are coming to talk about the games industry and their journey, okay? We have Alice, Bowman, we have Del Walker, we have Senna Colotran, and we have um, uh, Markin Ackerhurst, who will be coming to talk to us. Um, and we have two um, Middlesex staff, members of staff. So we have Penda and David, um, who will be talking to you about Middlesex. But we have a real um, big mix from the games design um, industry, okay? So, so Del is an, an artist. Um, we have a content designer in Alice, and we also have someone who uh, is a producer and a director and designer for games, okay? So we, we've covered quite a, uh, a large part of the industry. So it'd be a really, really interesting chat tomorrow. And so let me just, uh, just before I finish up, I just wanna give you a, a quick breakdown of what's gonna happen on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday, we're gonna have a quick introduction just to sign you into Mentee, like we usually do. Then we're gonna have um, the next session on part bait games where um, Mark is gonna go through more of the, um, the developing things that he, on, on Construct 3. Um, and then he's gonna do a, a session on prototyping. So lots of interesting things. And we um, uh, just before we get into the Q&A, get into design um, online careers panel with uh, that i've just mentioned so thank you all for listening and hopefully we'll see you on wednesday morning um with for some more part bait games um so and more more games design and more games mechanics thank you very much and hopefully we will see you on wednesday bye bye <laughs>